So with all the news and rumours about uh, AMD's big graphics card coming soon and rumours of all wins coming stuff, I thought I would talk about what's possible for NVIDIA to do. Because it's only fair to cover the other side when you're covering what uh, AMD is at. So I was like, do you know what, I'll just have a look at the brief history of, of, of GPUs to kind of get an idea of, of how NVIDIA scale up their GPUs. So we'll go across to my screen and we'll have a look. This is the Titan V. A lot of people um, tend to think that the Titan RTX is the fastest graphics card in the world. And while that's true in sheer performance, uh, Titan V um, in relative performance is faster than a 2080 Ti here on, um, you know, uh, tech power up but is that true i would argue that probably in gaming the 2080 ti beats the titan v right genuinely especially if you if you overclock it a bit and do all the stuff that you would normally do uh 2080 ti and you see there's no titan v here because it's not a gaming card it was a scientific card but the most interesting thing about the 2080 ti was it gives you a hint a glimpse into the future of what uh nvidia could do because this 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 card has 5120 cuda cores right 5120 which is a fucking lot it's 12 gigabytes the HBM, right? So you would imagine that the next generation of graphics card will probably have 12 gigabytes of RAM, maybe 16. I, I'm probably 12, let's be honest, right? Be, uh, but it's 12 gigabytes of HBM, and the HBM uh, has an effective bandwidth of 651 gigabits per second, gigabytes per second, sorry. So it is not very high clocking memory because there are four stacks of it, so it's not very high clocking. As with everything NVIDIA does, they try and cut down on costs. So they didn't do the, the whole Radeon 7 thing. Uh, 21 billion transistors, a very similar number. Uh, I'm sorry, a much larger number than this 18.6 billion transistors. But it is the idea that you're you, this is what you could get when you talk about the, um, the leap forward. Set 815 millimeters squared. Um, if you open up a calculator and you got 815 uh, minus 36% because was, we all know that is um, how much we how much I, I I figured out is is basically going to be the leap roughly from 16 nanometer or 12 nanometer which is 12 nanometers just a increased reticle limit of, of TSMC 16 nanometer so roughly 36% is about how much smaller your die will get uh, and you know like this has 21 billion transistors it's not going to have that many more to add RT cores so roughly ballpark 521 millimeter squared is the die size of what could be a 2080 or 3080 ti for instance right and um, if we look at the 3080 ti and we look at its die size 754 millimeter squared is quite a big big die but if you look at the history of how big uh nvidia like to give you for for uh you know for argument's sake for a ti class card it's around 500 millimeter squared it's around 500, 500, 600 millimeters, correct, right? So so it's not out of the root. Now, this was on 22 nanometer, and it was a fucking ancient. So they could give you a 600 millimeter squared. Very much similar to the way uh, they're able to give you 700 millimeter squared on, um, you know, TSMC 16 nanometer, because it's just fucking so old. Like, that's the reality about it. It's so old. So they're able to give you that extra die size. And if you look at how they scale up in shaders, you know, 2,000... 2800 that's a big leap in shaders but i think they lost some clock speed you can see the clock speed difference here yeah it's a huge like it's nearly 20 percent higher clock speed on the on the 980 so that's why you're not getting that massive performance increase uh, but things that people don't tend to remember about the 980 ti is that you could pretty much like it the core went to 2000 megahertz by itself and you could pretty much make it go to 1450 megahertz a lot of aftermarket cards did do for so there's a huge variation in the performance of 980 ti's i think 980 ti's are kind of undersold and thought, said to be slower than a 1070 but realistically there was a lot of performance in that die so you can see here by tech power ups numbers i always say these metrics are a bit bollocks but anyway relative performance 15 percent faster you can see 980 ti uh to sorry 1080 you can see this the 2500 shaders so what, what nvidia tend to do is they cut down the shader amount or the sm amount and they add more clock speed to get more performance so you can see with the 80 class card it's a cut down in shaders over the 980 ti 
but it has massively increased boost clocks of 70 and 133 megahertz and all of you who know pretty much every 1080 that was ever existed can do in excess of 2000 megahertz and um, you can see the 1080 ti very similar modus operandi here it's all about keeping this 250 watt tdp which is some for some reason nvidia's number 250 watts um, i'm just curious to see what the 980 ti is 250 watts they just have this arbitrary number that they want to keep to 250 watts you know uh, 2080 Ti, 250 watts. I bet the Titan V, haven't even looked at it, is 250 watts. That's how NVIDIA say so. Pre so because they're first to market, because they're the first to set the bar for performance and pricing, and because they know they're always going to be the fastest, they can kind of underclock and underperform their cards to get you that TDP of 250 watts. Now, no card, no big die like this will draw 250 watts if you made the Titan V go, for argument's sake, at what we know Pascal can do and we know Turing can do. And I would argue that this, if it had decent cooling and the power delivery and wasn't it wasn't um you know reduce had a reduced power budget you could probably make this run at 2000 megahertz so you've got a 2000 megahertz 500 501 uh 5120 cuda core graphics card this is frightening numbers because if you take this number here and we just take t flop to t flop these guys are pretty much the same card right there, there, there's not much of a difference so if we just took this number here and we know we're going to seven nanometers so we know we're going to get an increased clock speed and um, so here's here's 5120 right times two times uh let's say let's be really conservative in our clock speed recommendations for how how fast this 980 this this theoretical 30 30 Sorry, 3080 Ti is going to be. Let's say they use full a full die. Let's say it's 5,120, which is a lot of let's says, but we're speculating we're having a bit of fucking crack here. So 5,120, uh, let's see what the T-flop number is. So let's say, let's conservatively give it 1,900 megahertz. So 1,900 megahertz, that would give you a theoretical T-flop number of 20 T-flops, right? And we know that NVIDIA is a little bit faster um, because if you look at the, let's take, right, the 2070 Super, right, the 2070 Super has um, nine T-flops of FP32, which is just a raw grunt of the graphics card. Now, let's see what, right, and the, the, the RX 5700 XT is apparently, according to this, around 8% slower. I would argue it's more like 5%, but anyway, and you can see that this has 97 T flops of compute performance, so slightly more than a 2070 Super, which has uh, nine T flops. So when you look at all this in in kind of a grander scheme, and you kind of think about it in in uh, what you'll get in the future, um, 20 T flops from Nvidia is a bloody realistic possibility it's going to be smaller than they've given you before so in other words it could be it could be uh, 500 and odd millimeter squared rather than 600 millimeter squared so it looks like around the number that they could they could give you and um, you know it, it genuinely could hit 1900 megahertz not saying it will but you know nvidia like the, the 250 watt tdp they like that number I don't know why they like that number, but that's the number they like to quote on their graphics card. So out of the box, your, your graphics card is only going to draw about 250 watts and everybody screams and says this is an amazing graphics card. When realistically what you've gotten is a card that doesn't perform as well as it could and it would perform like that if there was any competition. So let's say, for instance, AMD came out with a faster card. Like let's say they this is the real, reality, right? So just at this, without doing anything, this card, without this hy hypothetical card which we which already exists because there's a titan v out there right and we know that if you keep a titan v cool you can get it to around 1900 megahertz so titan v is out there 20 t flops exists today that performance is out there if you wanted the fastest gaming graphics card in the world and you knew you could make a titan v go at 1900 megahertz you would probably have one in a titan v if you could do that so all AMD, all NVIDIA, sorry, have to do is get this graphics card out here, out there. Um, it already exists. It's not a huge fucking leap to imagine them doing that. So we're talking about a graphics card in the 3080, which is probably going to be the 2080 Ti. Realistic. That's why NVIDIA's, you know, launches work. Is that the 80 class card historically is always faster than the TI class card. And the 70 class card is usually as fast as the TI class card in and around the performance of it. And that's what we believe we're going back to with this cadence. So you're looking on a graphics card that's going to absolutely, completely and utterly smoke whatever AMD have at the moment. And then we have to think about what this, this 
um, you know, unofficial, but realistically probably going to happen, ADCU Navi's going to do. ADCU Navi's going to come out, and it's going to, God only knows what 7 nanometer EUV is going to bring to it, God only knows what, what improvements to the instruction set is going to bring to the, the table, God only knows what all that kind of stuff. But we know that this card is probably going to have to have a reduced clock over the 5700 XT to keep power under check, in check. But that might not be the case. But let's just say it is. You could end up with a card that has... I don't know. 18 T-flops. Going up against a card that has 19 T-flops. And this is something to think about when you think about this is that... Nvidia are already faster when it comes to um, T flop to T flop performance. They're already faster. So a nine T flop graphics card from Nvidia is faster than a nine T flop graphics card from AMD. That's the reality here, right? Um, some would argue for different reasons of why, whether it's driver implementation, whether it's the you know optimization in the game, whatever reason it is, right? They just they're just faster T flop to T flop. And what, historically, what AMD have always done is brought you a wider graphics card to make up for that difference. The issue is that, realistically, um, without knowing too much about what AMD are going to bring, the big problem for AMD the last couple of years is, as you watched the graphics cards move on, and you watched the last time AMD really had a shot at it, NVIDIA's high-end offering. In other words, they launched a graphics card to compete with their top de top de tip de top graphics card. It was the Fury against the 980 Ti. And the problem there was that in a stock for stock, the 980 Ti just pipped it. Just won. Now, the reality is that the Fury didn't overclock. But the 980 Ti did, because as I said before, Nvidia locks that motherfucker down to get to get TDP, you know, power and consult all that kind of stuff under check in check. So if you drop the clocks, you get a more efficient graphics card. Uh, so they added more shaders, drop the clock. That's what Nvidia do with their big thing. But the, that that graphics card could always do 980 like performance in terms of clock speed. So they could have just unlocked the clocks. So even without thinking about all of this stuff that AMD are going to do, AMD are going to bring out a card with 80 compute units that realistically will probably beat the 2080. Or the 3080, right? Probably beat the 3080. If they bring out an 80 CU graphics card. Let's just talk in hype. If they bring out an 80 CU graphics card and they do all of the things that we talked about in the past, they will bring out a graphics card that will beat a 3080 handily. Issue is we don't know about improvements to the instruction set. We don't know about improvements to the architecture. We don't know about really how what the true gains are from going to 7 nanometer EOV. There's a lot of ifs and ands that could add 5, 5 10, 15% to make that difference, to make it even faster or make it even slower. We just don't know. But the reality is that still they will be beating a 3080 and they will be probably benchmarking themselves against the 3080 or trying to beat this hypothetical 3080 in the labs, knowing roughly where it's gonna perform. And we know, because of just history, roughly how fast the 3080 is gonna be. 25 to 30% faster than the 2080 Ti. That's, that's history. So, and the current rumor is that this ADCU one, and we've seen benchmarks, is about 70% faster than the 2080 Ti in VR, some VR mark benchmark. And nobody knows whether that's real or true or false or whatever, nobody really knows. But roughly, you would you would imagine that AMD's goal would be get would would be to get thirty percent extra performance, right? So, let's say it's thirty percent faster than a twenty eighty Ti. I'm hoping they get a hundred percent scaling on the on the fifty fifty seven hundred XT, which they just won't get. But if they did, well then the uh, uh, pie in the sky numbers, bollocks, crazy man, man numbers, right? But if they if they don't and they just get the thirty percent. It's back to AMD just competing with the 80 class card. So we've waited a whole year and a half, whatever it's going to be, for AMD to come out with a card that's just going to be an 80 class card. And the reality is that a 3080 Ti can still be power limited, still be all of that kind of stuff, still have a reduced memory bus and stuff. Because the fact of the matter is that <laughs> Nvidia is still so far in the lead. 
And you can see that in every metric because when they weren't in the lead, what you were getting was you were getting two, three thousand. You can see it there. You, you were with with the nine eighty Ti. You were getting two thousand eight hundred shaders, right, from Nvidia, and two thousand eight hundred shaders was so much faster. I just I'm just curious to see with clock speed. I would just wonder uh, two thousand eight hundred, two thousand eight hundred plus. What well, what was it? Plus, um, let's just say fourteen hundred meters. So let's say plus forty percent. Yeah, so it's around like the the clock speed would make up for around a, a gulf of about a thousand shaders. So you you'd get a card that's that 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 had two thousand eight hundred shaders, and those two thousand eight hundred shaders was essentially faster than four thousand ninety six shaders from amd and that's the reality there amd needed four thousand shaders to beat a 980 ti now how far forward have amd come well they've got to the point where they they now can do roughly the same performance with roughly the same number of shaders the issue is that if they get to a point where they're not wider in other words they don't have more shaders than nvidia Nvidia still fucking wins, and that's the reality of it. The problem is that 250 watt TDP Nvidia have. If if they can't get it to beat it, they might actually have to go up in two TDP. And Nvidia don't like to do that. They like that 250 watt TDP. I don't know whether it's because they they want don't want to cannibalize their higher end stuff, and they know a gaming card clocked really well would do really well against that kind of stuff. Or I don't know what it is. And um, they will have to give you a full wide open memory bus. Like there's talk of of ten gigab gigabytes of memory on the on the eighty class card, and then there's talk of um you know I don't know maybe twenty on the on the on the larger one. Uh, that sounds a bit mad to me probably going to be 12 reality strikes again but when when people look at this g uh ga 103 this rumor ga 103 right and this is just me in a pub having a crack with you it's not realistic it's not going to happen it's just me talking shit right uh, it's clarified don't quote me as gospel don't send this to your friends and go look what this guy said this is the guy i'm not leaking this full it's fucking me having a laugh at a calculator and some history right that's what uh, that's what this is but when you look at the 3080 ti it could be a card that just beats whatever amd have and that's the problem with amd in the immediate f future is that it's late as i always said before and it's 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 too late. Nvidia already have an answer, and that answer is going to be a 3080 Ti, and they're probably going to launch a card that realistically costs them less money to manufacture than AMD is offering. They're really they're making more profit on it. The drivers are probably going to be better, and it's going to come out on time, on schedule, and the launch won't be bad, and they're going to do all that, and still have the 3080 Ti in their back pocket in case they don't the whatever the big big navi is going to be called um because amd have gone from the real gap is amd have gone from competing with ti class cards to now competing with 80 class cards and if they keep falling behind they'll be competing with 70 class cards and all they've done this generation around is pull themselves back to where they were before and they're probably going to sit somewhere between an 80 class and a, and a ti class when realistically what they need to jump start the whole thing again is just to be the fastest and i didn't want to turn this into talking about amd but the reality is you can't talk about one without talking about the other you can't talk about nvidia without talking about amd you can't talk about amd without talking about nvidia it only takes 5160 shaders or 100 and whatever 20 shaders nvidia have already shown you excuse me that they have that it, it exists it's called a titan v it's there it has a gold cooler on it it has hbm it's an unbelievable graphics card that was made as a showcase showcase to show what nvidia could do it was 815 millimeter squared and now nvidia can do that 
at a much more affordable scale. And this was the writing on the wall. This would have been the thing I, if I was working at AMD, this would have been the thing I'd draw on the wall. I'd be like, listen, this is the card we need to set our, set our sights on. This is the card we need to be looking at because Nvidia already have it. Get that card, see how fast we can make it go. Buy one, see how fast we can make it go. Roughly, because we know what performance increases um, TSMC give, uh, you know, from jumping to seven nanometer. So work out where that would perform. And that would be my target. That would genuinely be my target. Because the reality is this is going to be 600 millimeter squared. AMD's graphics card is going to be 500 millimeter squared. And yeah, AMD probably needs to make a 600 millimeter squared graphics card to compete with this. That's reality. But this card, by the time it launches, is probably going to be cheaper. In video work out some they'll they'll cut down the memory bus do something whatever use their superior uh memory oh this just just a reality like i don't want to be saying this this is this is frightening and sickening and horrible but the more you look at just the titan v which i've had gv100 i've had it in my head for a while um and you just look at it and you just go that is like like look at that die it is massive like, that is what AMD should have been targeting, realistically. Because NVIDIA have just showed you what it is. It will, it's probably because they wanted a 6 and 8 pin. That's why they have 250 watts. Yeah. But, like, you know, this reality is, is stark. It's frightening. And it only goes a 1400 megahertz, 1455 megahertz boost. And you can see here relative performance fastest graphics card on the planet realistically it is the fastest graphics card on the planet and it realistically it could probably do 1900 megahertz and on seven nanometers it can definitely do 1900 megahertz and that's just being conservative imagine if they got their seven nanometer cards to do 2100 megahertz or 2200 megahertz or 2300 megahertz or fucking the sky's the limit then realistically you're looking at a problem anyway like it if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it but if you dislike the 10 why dislike this can't fix it if you don't know what i did wrong and in the comments let me know what you think nvidia is going to bring let me know it doesn't once again i just want to clarify it doesn't matter what nvidia is going to bring because it's going to be ridiculously overpriced that's the reality of graphics cards today so it do doesn't matter that this is frightening and stark and it's amazing it's, it's just really really powerful it doesn't matter because the reality is it's probably going to be too expensive nobody's going to be able to buy it nobody's going to be able to afford it but the fundamental thing is NVIDIA doesn't care that you buy this card. It makes this card to make you buy the lower stuff. That's the reason why they launched this stuff, just to keep that crown. Because having that crown is the jewel in NVIDIA's marketing strategy. 100%. They're not sending reviewers fucking money to put boxes in the background. Yeah, they might put some pressure on reviewers to make sure that their men ray tracing is mentioned in a benchmark when comparing non-ray tracing cards to ray tracing cards they're definitely doing that and i don't care you call bullshit on that if you want but they're definitely doing that but the reality is the jewel the big weapon that they use to bam bat, bait amd around the head with is that they're just fastest they're the fastest graphics card in the world they build one and um, i love when people say i got the 2080 ti because i love the fastest and i'm like well 1200 quid well the, the, realistically and tom from wars Always dead says that and chris uh from the good old gamer says it as well realistically the fastest is in my opinion the titan v but you could say the rtx uh, titan that's the fastest so why didn't you buy that if you wanted the fastest you didn't because you didn't buy the fastest graphics card in the world you know the reality is 2500 quid it's stupid money for a graphics card and nvidia know that but it's called fuck off money. It's like, you know, when a plumber goes to do your fucking house and he just, the pipes are in state. Well, what you do is you offer, the, the the plumber will say, um, it's six grand when realistically the job should only cost two grand. But it's such a, it's, it's so much money that you could tell, that, the, that normally you tell the plumber to fuck off. But if you say right grand, well then he can't refuse it because it's such a high amount of money. That's what NVIDIA do with their high end cards so much money i don't care i'll give it to consumers if they want to spend that much money anyway don't forget to do the like and comment share and subscribe and sharing is the way to help me out the most it really does help me out the most and if you want to uh do patreon paypal links are in the description as always and yeah i have merch if you want to buy some merch i'm gonna press this button stop recording bye 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 bye